Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of watch collection. Uh, today what I want to do is have a state of the collection for 2023. And so we've got a lot of watches to take a look at, so let's get started. Uh, the first ones in my collection are a couple of my favorite by F.P. Jorn, the Souverain, Chronomet Souverain, and the Chronomet Resonance. Both of these watches I've had for quite a while. I got a, a blue strap for this, what's called the CS, the Chronomet Souverain. And I have several straps uh, for the other one, too. Love those watches. Uh, one thing that's going to happen this year, though, it's time for me to get my Chronomet Souverain service. So off it'll go to the service center. Uh, the second two are my uh, two Parmigiani. These are two watches I, I really like a lot. Uh, the blue, the light, what is it called? Sort of a powder blue, uh, robin's egg blue uh, watch, Parmigiani Fluier Colpa Grande XL. <laughs> what a name. Uh, that one I've had for quite a while. Uh, a couple years ago, I had to have it uh, serviced, and it came back and was like having a brand new watch. My other watch, the my other Parmigiani, is a Tonda Hemisphere dual time zone. This is my definite go-to watch when I travel. Fortunately, I haven't been able to do much traveling uh, ever since the pandemic started, but I'm going to get back to it soon, I hope. Uh, the next two watches are, both of them have features by top watchmakers. So do the other ones I just showed, but... Uh, these are sort of it's a little more hidden. The Harry Winston Premier by Retrograde has a movement by Gerard Perigot, but more importantly, it has a module by Agenor, uh, by Jean-Marc Viderec, uh, for the uh, dual retrograde. Uh, this was watch was from sort of the pre-Swatch, before Swatch bought them. I don't know what they did afterward, but wonderful watch. The Harboring 2 Felix, uh, caliber A11 by uh, Richard Harboring and Marie Harboring. Uh, this watch is one of those just, it's just always a good watch. It's hand wound. In fact, uh, most of my watches are hand wound. The Harry Winston is a, an automatic, but like I said, most of the other ones are hand wound. Now, these next two are Beauvais, uh, and they're very different Beauvais. The Beauvais 1822 uh, is from a time when uh, Pascal Raffi took over and, and really revived it, saved it from total oblivion, was very, very much um, able to recreate the very best of Beauvais rather than coming out with something that wasn't too interesting. Uh, the first one, the one on the left, is the called the 1930 uh, Fleurier, and it has the uh, at the top up here for the uh, for the lug. It's got what's called a Bowen uh, a Bowen crown. So sort of a neat one. Now my Beauvais Monoratra Pont. Uh, this is one of the few true vintage watches I have, and I got this one because it was uh, this was from. A, they found, I guess, a case of these things somewhere, and there was they had been sitting around for about 70 years. And the thing about it is that the Valju 84 uh, is a has a mono in it. What a mono retropone is is that a your typical retropone has two different uh, hands for doing timing. Uh, the this the mono retropone has one hand and so you time the first thing and then you uh, hold it down and then you uh, then what happens is that when the second time is done you release it and it jumps to where the second time was really a very interesting watch now these next two are two i absolutely one i'm wearing uh this is a uh a vacheron content in historique American 1921 caliber hand wine uh, restaurant content in 4400. I think this came out about 2013, and at that time there was a serious effort by 
best their own content tend to have all of their own movement. Like a lot of watchmakers, uh, they have been using uh, movements by other companies, uh, Zazer Lacoutre, uh, Gerard Perigo, and so forth. Uh, but this one has its own movement. My Van Cleef and Arpels, Pierre Arpels, um, Air DC et Ur Dyer. <laughs> oh, it's a hard one. It means time here and time there. Uh, this is by uh, Jean Marc Viderec for uh, Van Cleef and Arpels. And what it, uh, what it is, is a watch that in 1949 was created by Pierre Arpels. And the, he just wanted a guy's watch. He wanted it thin. Uh, I think he used uh, gold, white gold or regular gold. And uh, that, they had that model for years. And then I think around 2004 or five thereabouts, they said, we got to get a modern, we got to get a modern watch. And we want something with an automatic. We want dual times and we want it to thin. Well, they had been using a Piaget movement. And, uh, but, uh, and so they hired Jean-Marc Viderec to uh, make a module for it. <laughs> no way you can do that and keep it thin. And so he has an entire new uh, movement called the AG86029. It's a wonderful watch. Uh, I love wearing that watch. Now, uh, these two are more on the economical side. Uh, the Longines Epimedes Solaris uh, 5235, I bought this watch because I wanted an equation of time watch. An equation of time watches cost a fortune. And I found this one, and it was affordable. It has a uh, Long Jeans L640 based on uh, ETA 2832 elabor elaborated. Okay, equation of time. The blue line around the bezel is that you, you unlock the bezel. There's a little lock at the bottom. And the uh, and then turn the bezel to the date and you can tell relative to the time and the day uh, the difference between the solar time and the apparent time that you show on your watch. Fun watch to have. Um, I wanted a regulator but I really wasn't into regulators and so I don't want to spend a lot of money on it. I found this one. It's called Perpetual Regulator. Perpetual is the name of the company. It's a, it's a, a one in Hong Kong. It has a Siegel ST 1711 Chinese movement in it. This watch has been fantastic. It cost me 200 bucks. Uh, it still works great. Uh, it has a guilloche, I'm sure it's stamped, but it's really nice guilloche. And the uh, uh, the blued is heat blued. So it's not, I mean, it's not chemically blued or so any other way, but it's done with uh, Grand Fu, I think is what it's called. Uh, another watch I enjoy having. Now, these next group of watches, I there's a movement that was done by, um, I think, Jean-Pierre Jacquet. It was a company called Jacquet SA, and this is around 1999, 2000, that era and there. And what Jacquet had been doing is they've been, they make movements from other movements. In other words, they'll get a movement already, so all you got to do is pop it in the watch, and this is what their business was. And so they would get an iboche. Most of them were from ETA. Take the iboche, put it together in a movement. Now, this one movement they made was called the Jacques 736. It was a shape movement. And a number of different companies uh, started using it. Uh, they have, the first one I got was by uh, Maurice Lacroix. Uh, their masterpiece rectangular. And then I have other ones by Jacques Etoile. Is this? Uh, Philippe Dubois at Sfiel, uh, the uh, Alfred Dunhill, uh, 8041, and Jacques Dro Tonneau GMT. Now, there is no connection between Jacques 736 movement and the watch name uh, Jacques Dro's. They're very different. Nor the Jacques Etoile uh, Estes, which is a German-made watch, but it's a it's one of the few shaped affordable movements. 
And um, unfortunately, uh, there was the <laughs> Jean Pierre had to go to jail because of some hijinks they were doing, and the um, movement then was taken over by a company that was basically renamed from Jacques KSA, and they were making it for a number of years afterwards. Uh, that's just a weird, fun collection of mine, a sub-collection, and this, the watches are relatively affordable and fun to find. Now, this next one uh, is, it's got a long story, but I'm not going to go into it. It's my Christian Vanderklaub series, 1974, caliber CVD uh, 1068. I really wanted a Christian Vanderclaw. I couldn't afford one. I finally ended up uh, trading for the one that I got, the uh, the 1974. Love the looks of that watch. Very difficult to set the... <laughs> it doesn't have a pusher. They used to have a pusher. The model I have, you mess with the uh, crown. The other one uh, is, this is a delight, Roger Dubuis Sympathy. Now, a sympathy is usually doesn't look like a sports watch. Uh, this is a, sort of their sports watch version, I guess, of the sympathy. Later on, a very similar watch came out. At, well, similar in some respects as this one called the Easy Diver. And I had one of those and I sold a wonderful watch uh, on that too. Okay, the, these next two are two watches I just love. Um, one is Langenheim Frederick uh, II. Uh, this one was made while Marco Lang was still there, the watchmaker. Mine is number 10. I'm just <laughs> nuts about this watch. It's wonderful. On the back, it's even better with a caliber 6. Um, the Urban Jurgensen Jules Grenage uh, 2240. Uh, this is another uh, one in red gold caliber P4. Caliber P4 is uh, sort of the, the bedrock um, movement for by Urban Jurgensen. And uh, I believe Derek Pratt was involved in creating that movement as well. As long as I think uh, Kari Wootenlanen was, I know he did some of the prototyping uh, with it as well. Uh, fabulous watch. Uh, what happened was that when the company was sold to Kari Wootenlanen's group, uh, what they did was that they took all of their old stock and had a basically a fire sale. Federico had it. Um, <laughs> that's how I got it. I couldn't have afforded it uh, any other way. That's another thing. I'm always looking for something that's at a great price that I can afford. Uh, speaking of which, uh, here are another two of my very favorite watches. I have too many favorite watches, to tell you the truth. I want to wear all of them all of the time. The H. Moser uh, at Company, Henry Double Hairspring, uh, a hand-wound watch with a double hairspring that keeps the centered, keeps the, um, the staff on the balance wheel centered. Uh, it's sort of like a two-engine airplane. They have propellers going in opposite directions so the torque doesn't pull them one way or the other. When I used to fly, I had a single and I had to hit the opposite rudder. Otherwise, it wanted to pull you right off the uh, runway when during takeoff. Uh, and so this watch is it's just a it's just a favorite white gold beautiful watch. Now I also wanted a uh, one by H Moser that was an automatic, uh, not an automatic, but a, a seven day watch and our weekly. And I got this uh, Endeavor Center Seconds Caliber 343. Just another fantastic watch. This one I got in rose gold uh, and. Very clean dial, which is so much of a trademark, really, of H. Moser. I got an orange uh, band for it. I thought that looked cool with it. Uh, the band is from uh, Jean Rousseau Paris. They, they make great ones. Now, this next two watches are part of a collection uh, well, this is the two watches and much of a sub collection. In fact, I'll probably be selling the uh, chronograph. I'm just not into chronographs, but still, 
Uh, Daniel Roth, uh, for a period of time, I think it was in the 90s, early 2000s, had a he, he had a company with his own name on it. Before that, he was uh, re even recreating uh, Breguet. Uh, and then he was, I think, for a while. And that was, something happened. It wasn't his, had nothing to do with his, anything he did. It was uh, the Chomet brothers <laughs> invested unwisely and went broke. But anyway, two of the, the thing about this, they have things called, they have a shape called elip, uh, ellipso curvex, and it's sort of like a, a tone to no shape watch, but sort of like a either that or a, um, a rectangle that decided at the top and the bottom to go into a curve on both of these watches. The uh, Daniel Ross Masters Chronograph, uh, DR400, is it has an El Primero 400 in it. Both watches keep great time, and they're you know one of the one of the top watchmakers in the world. Uh, and I can't afford this. Is the one you go see him, and you, know, you got to come up with two hundred thousand bucks for one of his watches they're making today. And so these are fun to collect. Now these next two watches are. The the Chanel uh, Monsieur watch or Monsieur de Chanel caliber one. Now this is this watch is uh, again it was one of these watches that a lot of things had to come together at once. I'd sold the watch and uh, in fact had two watches and I happened to have enough money I could afford it. But the, one of the reasons I like this watch is that Chanel had bought an interest, owned an interest in uh, Romain Gautier. And they bought that interest mainly because of the parts and everything else that went into it. And so when it came time for them to, to really have their first in-house movement, they hired eight watchmakers. I think it took them a total of five years. And then they worked with uh, Romain Gautier and came up with this incredible uh, watch uh, called the Chanel Monsieur watch. Now, another one, now Chanel is known, obviously, not for watches, but for something else. And this company, there's another company called Chomet. And this watch, uh, Chomet is a famous, famous jeweler. Uh, and they're not known for watchmaking. But what I found out is that these really top jewelers like Harry Winston and, and uh, Chanel and some of these others, Hermes, what they do is that they hire the very best in watchmakers. Now, this particular one, uh, to me, is fascinating because uh, over on the far right, you can see this big wheel. It's uh, shaped like a ferris wheel in paris and they also have a model uh, instead of having a wheel there they have a, a second hand and what they have in there they have these two agonies gears and the gears and the teeth have these little springs and so there's almost well almost absolutely no slippage and so you end up with this wheel making this perfect uh turning now the base movement is an eta i gotta give you a tip on this one you can find these for very inexpensive now with a name like dandy arty you know it's like come on i'm not gonna wear something like that i look like a a big fop or something so but anyway i love this watch and it's so well made it's like a piece of jewelry with a very interesting <laughs> clockwork inside now the final one in my 2023 collection is my etude number one uh this watch is is uh one that a group of us we got together we went to the top watchmakers in geneva for the movement we have a, a a bespoke movement by Agenor. It's called the AGH 6801. They made a gorgeous movement for us with an Agenor base to it. Uh, the dial was done by Metal Limb. This was the same uh, dial company that did Philippe Dufour's 37, 
We have The Hands by Fiedler, uh, The Case by Bruton, Lannan, and Kalen. The uh, Strap is by a company called Textro. I forgot the name exactly, and I mispronounced the name of the uh, the buckle maker, Busha there, or something like that. Uh, but what what they did is that we we asked them who were the very best. Let me get the name of the uh, uh, the the band maker is uh, Protexo. Now on this particular watch here, I I got a, a, a Maurice um, a Jean Rousseau uh, band for it. I wanted the Gator band with shiny Gator. This watch is fantastic, <laughs> and it's uh, I'm glad I have it and. Anyway, well, listen, uh, that's it for 2023 State of the Collection. Love to hear your comments, what I should get, what I should get rid of. <laughs> and in the meantime, I'm going to play with my dandy. <laughs> Take care. Uh, see you next time.